Hi guys, Opa over at Opa's workshop has put out a new life challenge to a few of us where we take something old and give it a new life as a new piece of furniture. So I have um, these two pedestals from this table that was given to me and the table was outside so it got a bit ruined and the top of the table is right here. It's my outfeed table now that it's sitting on and I didn't know what I was going to do with them so I thought it would be good to use them for this challenge. This is an old um, bookcase. It's put together with like cam locks and I had to get them out before I could cut it up. And then some nails along the back to hold the backer board on. Got rid of those as well. I'm cutting this up to become a sled for the the two pedestals um, so I can cut them in half. I was going to use this sled on my table, not my table saw, on my band saw, um, but I got to building it and it, the clearance wasn't going to be enough on the saw to cut through the pedestal and the sled. And I even thought about taking the band, I actually took the bandsaw table off to try to get it to a little more clearance and use the sled as the table instead, but it still wasn't going to be enough. So later you'll see me modify it so I can use it on the table saw as like a table saw sled. I'm just cutting 45 so I can have a 45 sled so that when the spindle sits in it, uh, no matter where it's touching, because it, since it's not, you know, flat, it's got different ridges and things, it will always cut it right in half, no matter that there's different diameters in the spindle. And I should have done this part a little bit better because it was really <laughs> kind of hard to hold that and and get it nailed in at the same time. And I'm also trying to keep it right on the line that goes up the middle of this so that it's, everything stays straight. Uh, it got a little off the line, but when I put the next piece on, I just, I kept it out of 45 so nothing got messed up. I thought I'd put these off cuts in there just because it couldn't hurt. It's just a little extra stability. And then these parts obviously support the 45 so it doesn't break off. At this point I was still going to use it on my bandsaw. And I think around after this dried I checked and it just was not going to fit. So now I'm starting the modifications for the sled so that I can use it as a table sled. I have to connect both sides of the sled now so that when I cut it up the middle it won't break apart into two pieces. Because on the band saw it was only going to cut halfway through and I was going to push the spindle through. But now it's just going to be just like a table saw sled, like a cross cut sled. 
and so that these are going to be pieces that go up and over each side, kind of keep them together after it's cut apart. I have to keep checking that it's staying at a 45 because putting the clamps on and everything pushes it a little bit so they're just on there enough to keep them on there, not clamped really tight. I'm adding this part so that I can put the runners on the bottom. It was just a little too a short width wise to accommodate both the runners so um, this isn't very strong but I don't envision using this again so I have this sled now but I don't know what if I'll ever use it again or what for so I didn't really care if it was su too super strong I just had to get through those two spindles There's the bandsaw top that I took off when I was trying to get it to work on the bandsaw. And there's the runners that will slide in the miter slots on the table saw. Again, just like a crosscut sled. I'm just putting washers underneath to lift them up. So when they glue, they'll or the glue will touch the top of the table, and then they won't bottom out in those slots. My camera, I think it's getting full of sawdust or something. So having a really hard time focusing. So you're going to kind of see it go in and out of focus. I'm sorry about that. Throughout this whole build, it's done that. Bandsaw. Tabletop again as weight. And there's the runners. I probably could have gotten away with just gluing them since it's only going to be used this one time but I might as well I thought I might as well put some screws in it. And then I I split this next one. The screws are too big so got some smaller ones. And it seemed to work out okay. Taking the washers out, testing it. Put on some paste wax to make it slide really easily. And this part was a little bit scary, cutting it in half. I didn't know if it was just going to spring apart, but it seemed to be okay. These are where the legs attached. The legs had rotted out, so I had to take the posts out. And then this part was also a little dicey. I couldn't let it move any, or spin any. Otherwise, it wouldn't be straight cut. But it seemed to work out okay. I originally thought of just holding the spindles and, and running them through the bandsaw and cutting them in half that way, but the little safety thing in my little safety voice in my head would not let me do that. And I'm glad I didn't because I don't think I could have held on to it very well.
This is the second one. Uh, the footage from the cutting the first one all the way in half was way too blurry, so you'll see it a little better on this one. And it doesn't actually cut it all the way in half, the blade doesn't go up enough, but I was able to run it through the bandsaw later, as you'll see, and just cut a little bit in the middle, which felt a lot safer than cutting the whole thing on the bandsaw. And then this is how I tried to keep the cut right in half. I just stuck a ruler in there, made sure it was 90 degrees, and that seemed to keep it pretty much in half. One of them was a little bit off, but I fixed it later. And it wasn't really crucial that they be exactly in half. And then cutting that little bit on the bandsaw was was pretty easy after that. Turns out it looks like it was made of poplar. And I don't know if it's just because it was old, but it smelled horrible when I was cutting it. I don't, I've never used poplar, so maybe that's just the way it smells. And I don't need the bottom part, so I'm just cutting that off. And the posts on the top were not needed either, so they all got cut off as well. And then I'm trying to figure out where exactly I want to put the shelves that this is going to become. And so I did that right at that moment. I got a lot of it smoothed out on the sander, but I don't, I don't really like it. It, no matter what I do, it doesn't seem to be at 90 degrees that table to the sander, and then the rest I just chiseled away to get it flat, just close to flat because you're not going to even see the backs of these. I tried a lot of different ways to make to make this easier, but they weren't all like that. I think it's just the one spindle I accidentally cut. It's just a tiny bit off, so it has a little bit more on one side than the other. Now I'm starting on the shelves, and this board. I thought I checked in the store, but this board is fairly twisted, which ended up making the shelves sit a little bit twisted when they're all finished, but it's not really that noticeable.
some of the twist is cut out right here because I ripped it, but I was trying not to end up with too many knots on the edges because I'm going to router use a router on the edge of them later and you never know what's going to happen with the router and a knot. This again went blurry but I basically used a compass to transfer that same arc to the edge of the board. And then I used the cutoff to draw the arc on the other side. And then coughing it to the second board. And I did all the shelves this way. And there's a lot of hand sanding. And then I put a, I believe it was a three quarter round over on all the, on both the outside edges. I wanted it to kind of look like the cove that was in the original part of the spindle that I cut out, so it looks like an extension of those parts across the shelf. This is a little difficult as well to try to get, I had to hold the, it, <laughs> hold it into the jig and then drill it out and hope it didn't move. These were actually the easier parts. The other parts were a lot harder to, to drill the pocket holes in. You might not be able to tell, but the shelves are different sizes based on where in the spindle they were going to fall, so it wouldn't, I didn't think it would look right if they were all the same size shelves, being that the diameter of the spindles is different in each place. spray paint the whole thing white. And I hung it up at my sister's because she liked it more than I did. It's not really my style. And you might be wondering what you put on a shelf like this. And that's dinosaurs, of course. Thanks for watching, guys.